Okay, so this is video two in the series of parts for the grinder assembly. There will be five total videos involved here. The last video I completed was for the base, so please go back and watch that if you've not completed the base. On this one, I'm going to focus in on the slider. Okay, so I'm actually going to blow up on this upper left-hand corner of the drawing and focus in on this part right here, the slider. Okay, now the easiest way to approach this is really from the front view. All right, so I'm going to start an inch part. From the front view, I'm going to create this outside shape, and then I'm going to extrude it back 1.25. Now, I will tell you there's a kind of mistake on here. I did not add in two key dimensions. I should have added a dimension from the center of the circle to the edge of 0.375, and then from this center to this edge, I should have made it uh, 0.625. Um, I have to make a correction on that, but we'll go through that in the actual design. Um, so if you follow along, you should get that hole exactly in the same spot. We're also going to introduce a new tool in this, um, this video here called the Hole Wizard. Okay, the Hole Wizard is going to tie into all this information. I'll kind of explain it roughly so you can get at least an idea how to use it. Um, but we're going to go through that whole process in just a moment. Okay, so I'm going to go to my SOLIDWORKS here real quick. I'm actually going to slide my drawing over, go to here. Oops, there's my base. I'm going to go ahead and close that out. Uh, I'm going to take my PDF file real quickly. I'm just going to slide it to the other screen so I can see my dimensions. I'm going to do a file new and do an inch part and say OK. And on my design tree over here to the left, I'm going to highlight the front plane, start a new sketch, and I'm going to take my line tool and simply just go ahead and draw a rough shape of the part I'm looking for. So I'm going to go here, kind of up at an angle, kind of come back here. It's a little bit beyond and up and over and down, kind of in, back down at an angle and close. Okay, so very rough shape of what we saw in that upper left hand corner of the drawing. Oops, let me hit that again, spacebar normal two. Okay, so now i got to define this with my Smart Dimension Tools and some relationships. So I'm going to go to my Smart Dimension Tool here. And the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead from the very top, I'm going to make this a total distance of 0.75. Okay. And then it shows me from this point here to this point here, I'm going to make this uh, 0 0.3005, Enter. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to change that so you can see the actual numbers. All you have to do is, with this highlighted, if you look over here to your left where it says Tolerance and Precision, and it says 0.123 document, if you drop that down to 0.1234, it will show you all the numbers. This will play an important role also on our drawing because we must show all of our decimal places. Okay, now from here, I'm going to hit this little line right here. This distance is going to be point two two four seven enter okay and again i'm going to go to my left and change that from 0.123 to 0.1234 that way you can see the actual number okay and I'm, I'm flipping the arrows in you don't have to do all this i just want you so you can see it on my screen okay that gives me a start go to this right hand side i'm going to make the height of this 0.2 from the very top to the very bottom down here i'm going to make this 0.6 Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let me back this up, bring that back up a little bit so you can see the numbers. That looks good. I'll flip these inside. Okay, and then this bottom is going to be 0.5. All right, now, the reason it's currently not fully defined is because right now I got two little things I got to make sure that happen here. The big one is I need to make these two angled sides equal to each other. So I use my control key and make the two equal. And just like that, we have this thing fully defined. I can tell it's fully defined in two ways. The color of all the black lines and the fact this is fully defined at the bottom. Now from here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do an extrusion. So I'm going to go to Features, Extrude Boss Space, and we're going to extrude this. And It doesn't matter which direction you go right here um, for this one. Okay, What we're going to do in this case is just going to do a straight up extrusion of 1.25 and hit Enter. I'm going to hit my check mark. And hit my F key. Okay, now obviously this piece is not made of wood. So what I have to do is I'm going to bring my drawing back over because now what we're going to do is back this up for a second and come down here and look at what's called the bill of materials. That is this box in the lower right hand corner. Inside there are the descriptions of each part's materials. So for instance, here's the word slider right here. 
it is going to be made of brass. Okay, so I'm going to go back into my part. Oops, sorry, back to my part. Go into where it says balsa right here and right click and do an edit material. Now, brass is a copper alloy. So I'm going to go underneath here, open this up in alphabetical order. There is the word brass. Apply, close. Okay. Now, again, if yours is really shiny, it's because most likely underneath this little, what I call the television set, you probably have your real view graphics on. Okay. And so if it's really bright yellow, that's fine. My preference, I don't like this on because when I go to rotate, it turns into dark shadows, which is really hard to see stuff. So my preference is unless I'm rendering, I like the real view graphics to be turned off. Okay, that way it's easier to see everything. There's no shadows. Nice and clean. Okay, now before I get to the last step, which is the whole wizard, let's quickly do a control S to save. Locate your folder where you save the, uh, the uh, grinder assembly base. We're going to save this in the same folder area. I'm going to call this grinder, oh, caps lock, grinder slider in my last name. Okay, I'm going to say save. Now, the last thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and add a hole in the center of this. This is why I need to add those dimensions because I should never allow you to assume, that was bad on my part, to assume where that hole is. You always want to define it so there's no guessing. That hole is dead center, okay, which is where the 0.625 and the 0.375 come in. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use what's called a hole wizard tool. Okay, the hole wizard is really important in SOLIDWORKS because it also ties in later on into the toolbox we'll be using when we do our assembly mode and we bring in screws. Okay, to find the hole wizard, you go to features and right in the middle you're going to see this hole wizard. It's basically a box of the hole, has a little wand with stars. Okay, it's like a wizard. If I left click on it, it'll take a second to boot up. But over here to the left, I have all my property manager. Okay, and this is where I define my hole. Now, there's only really three holes we're going to worry about in this class. The first one in the first row, which is called a counter bore, and if you hover over each, you'll see the name. A counter sink, which is usually for screws. This one's for bolts. And then we're going to do what's called a tapped hole, or straight tapped. Okay, a tapped hole is a threaded hole. That is where you actually have threads in there, so a screw can be twisted into it. All right. This hole that we're looking at, I'm going to bring that drawing back up so you can see it. And it'll blow up on here. This hole is actually a tapped hole. This dashed line going around it indicates a screw thread. Okay, so that tells me it's a tapped hole. Now, most of you have not seen something like this before. Okay, let me quickly explain, and I'll also explain it in class. I usually do a visual aid on this. It makes it a little bit easier to understand. Basically, in a nutshell, what this node is telling you, it's telling you that, okay, I've got this piece of brass in front of me. I'm going to go into the back shop that we have here at school, and I'm going to open up the cabinet, and I'm going to grab a drill bit that is 0 0.1360 inches in diameter. Okay, I'll take that drill bit, and I'm going to drill that hole. I'm going to come up here, and this is where I need that dimension, but I'm going to measure up 0.625 and in 0.375, put my drill bit right here and I'm going to turn on my drill and drill down 0.3436 inches into the brass. Okay, so it's not going all the way through the brass. All right, then I'm going to go into my cabinet again and at the very bottom of the cabinet I have a tap and die set. Now those of you who have ever worked on cars or done any repairs made with your dad on a car and rebuilt a motor, you would know what a tap and die set is because usually we tap all your holes Okay, so that your holes have very sharp, nice um, uh, screw teeth or threads. So when you put your screws in there, they're firmly in there so that your motor doesn't blow apart. Okay, so what I would do is I'd open up my tap and die set, specifically grab a tap, tapped hole, a tap. It looks like a drill bit with these uh, uh, screw teeth on them. Okay, it's got a T-handle, and I'm going to put that T-handle into the hole right here in the center and begin to twist like a corkscrew. I'm going to twist to my right. Okay, I'm going to twist that thread down a quarter inch and stop. Okay, so the thread only goes down a quarter of an inch. All right, now, I don't expect you to remember all that, but I do want you to understand that all these numbers are really important to the whole wizard. 
Okay, so I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to move this to my side. And on my hole wizard here, I'll first pick the correct hole, which is a tapped hole. Okay, now this is important. The units, the standard, must be the same. Now, if I drew this in inches, then it should say right here, ANSI inch, not ANSI metric. So how do I change it? You left click, roll your middle mouse ball up, and hit ANSI inch. It's imperative your units match. I cannot stress that enough. I'm going to go over the bottoming tap hole. Okay, this is real simple. I'm just going to leave the default there. <coughs> Excuse me. And then I got to go to the size. Okay. Now the size is that number 8-32. Okay. The number 8 actually is basically the size of the hole. 32 represents 32 threads per inch. Again, I don't expect you to know this, but for those of you that are thinking of mechanical engineering down the road, you will have to understand these notes. Okay, so I'm going to go to here and drop this down, and I'm going to look specifically for a number 8-32. Number 8-32. Okay, I'm going to left click. Now in this case, I'm going to say show custom sizing. There's that point one three six zero that we're talking about. Okay, now the end condition. This does not go through all. So we have to change this to blind because we're going to tell it specifically how far in am I cutting. So when I turn that on, here are two more boxes. Okay, now let me go back into this. I'm going to bring this number over here and bring this back in. So there's the point 136. There's the point or number 832. The other two numbers I need to put in is 0.3436 and 0.25. Okay, so if you look at these last two boxes, the first box over here, I'm going to put in 0.3436, enter. It turns yellow to indicate I changed it. It's okay. And then this box here, instead of 0.328, or 0.3, yeah, 0.328, I'm going to put 0 0.2500, enter. All right, so now if you're looking at that note, all those pieces are in there. There's that 832, there's a point 0.1360, there's the point 0.3436 is what it should be. Okay, and then this is my point 0.250. Now, in order to place a hole, this is really important. I have to find it fully. I know which hole I'm using. I know what uh, standard it is. I know what size it is. I know all the custom sizing. Now I've got to position it. So I go to this new tab and it says, okay, select the face for the hole or slot position. So I'm going to click on this top face. I'm going to do a space bar and a normal two so I can see this. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball right in the middle of this part and left click. Now be careful because you still are active. You begin to click everywhere. You're going to have holes all over your part. So to turn this off, I'm going to hit escape one time. Now this is really important. This is where most of the mistakes are then made. In order for us to put the hole in the right position, we must dimension it in this mode okay what happens i get a lot of kids will exit out of this and then they'll go back and try to dimension it doesn't work you must dimension the hole to its place in this hole wizard mode okay i cannot stress that enough so i'm gonna go smart dimension from the center to this bottom edge this is the one i was missing 0.625 okay and then from the center here to here is 0.375 Okay, now, how do I know it's fully defined? Because all I see is this little asterisk symbol. Right down here, it says it's fully defined. That tells me the hole is right where it needs to be, and SOLIDWORKS is happy. Now, to activate the hole so you can see it, all you have to do is hit the green check mark. And just like that, there is that hole. This dashed line is the thread. Okay, so from an isometric standpoint, there is your finished part. Okay, so I'm going to do a quick control S to save. You can go ahead and find the mass if you'd like to, but at this point, you have the part saved, you have everything designed, you have the whole wizard put in, so this part is now complete. So again, use this video to your advantage. If you need to rewind specifically over the whole wizard, rewind it, play it as many times as you need to, because we're going to start seeing the whole wizard a lot more. With that said, um, use this video to your advantage. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to ask. Otherwise, good luck.